Hello guys. I have been quite busy during the past few weeks and so my activity on YouTube was somewhat limited to a few comments. Not long ago my channel was poking along at the two digit subscriber mark, but thanks to the help of the Atheist Hub and the subsequent shoutouts by Wildwood Claire and the Living Dinosaur, the 1k mark was reached within days. The thank you is truly overdue. It is hard to gain a decent audience. You just drown in trivial comedy, girl fail competitions and Ray William Johnson. Rising to the surface of these indifferent seas requires the help of experienced sailors. Both Wildwood Claire and The Living Dinosaur are well known for their tireless support of the unrecognized. The Atheist Hub is solely dedicated to furthering the unknown rationalists. One can hardly overestimate the importance of such efforts and thus I would ask you to lend them your support. I want to follow that tradition with two suggestions. The chemistry question is a passionate educator who literally lives chemistry and standalone forever whose channel logo is a 4F orbital. If you don't know what a 4F orbital is, I recommend a quick visit to their channels. Links are below. And by all means click your way through my list of featured channels. It is an ensemble of science defenders, educators and rationalists, or as Ken Ham calls it, the devil's spawn. Having dealt with the formalities, let me just talk a little about Celestial Mechanics 3. There has been an article in Nature magazine titled Planetary Science Caught in the Act. It presents four celestial bodies with surprising characteristics and suggests that the solar system might be a lot more dynamic than previously thought. While fascinating to those with an inquisitive mind, it is all too easily twisted into a grotesque parody by the lie dispensers of this world. But enough with the pleasantries. Here I have two papers. Well, more accurately, I have one scientific paper and a TPS report by that glowing bastion of reason, otherwise referred to as the International Conference on Creationism. I am going to read an extract from both, and your assignment is to tell me which is which. But from observations of Io, any change in Io's orbit seems to be too small to measure. This is shown by results published by Lieske. The study examines a large amount of data including 16,000 eclipse observations from 1652 to 1983. Their published value for the rate of change of the mean motion of Io is minus 0.74 plus or minus 0.87 times 10 to the power of minus 11 per year. They suggest that Io is slowly evolving out from Jupiter and out of resonance with time. But when the uncertainty is greater than the measured change, how can this be a proper conclusion? I will take the view that this result indicates that Io's orbit is stable and exhibits no secular change. In contrast, could it be that we are witnessing the further decay of the Laplace resonance due to the dissipation of Io? Because the energy dissipated must come from the orbits, a continuing decay of the Laplace configuration would result in an increasing N1. Measures of N1 based on 300 years of precise ephemerides of Galilean satellites coupled with precise observations imply either an acceleration of Io's mean motion, indicating further decay of the resonance configuration, or insufficient deceleration from Jupiter torques on Io to accommodate the high heat flux from Io in an equilibrium eccentricity configuration. Please put your answers down below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.